I remember the first time I got in trouble with a pastor. <laughs> okay, maybe it wasn't the first time. <laughs> I don't know that I... Um, I don't know what God has in store for me or, you know, why I seem to bring out the best in some people and the worst in others, but I remember I was playing second fiddle, so to speak, to a ministry and a minister, and he was a Calvary Chapel pastor and young and, you know, still doing his own thing, and there's a stage that pastors go through that you may not know about. This is true of Calvary chapels, especially. But they they tend to get it in their their mind that, you know, they've got a certain thing in mind. You know, and then God has to actually kind of destroy that image and then make the person into what he wants them to be before they realize that, you know, it was God all along that was trying to make them into something. And sooner or later, they, they, they usually get around to it. But at some point in time, they either go one or two different directions. They either become a cookie-cutter Calvary Chapel pastor, which is exactly like some other ministry they just came out of, wherever they got saved at, or they go the opposite extreme and they try to be a rebellious kind of opposite, independent type person until they kind of come back to the, the median, which is, you know, whatever the Lord leads them into, you know, they... They learn as they go, you know, and that's kind of what Chuck said. Well, I was in this one ministry, and sure enough, I, I, uh, you know, had never been, even when I was at Calvary Costa Mesa, we used to call it Chuckite, meaning that, you know, we thought that Chuck walked on water or anything. I mean, we love Chuck. I mean, why would we think he walked on water? That's silly. But, you know, now... Could he fly? Of course, but walk on water? Never. <laughs> Just kidding. But, you know, we were grounded because we had Romaine around, and, and we had a balance of ministers and teachers that were all kind of, you know, they had rough edges. I mean, they weren't like the most polished, you know, Greg, Mike, Rawl. <laughs> uh, let's see, who else was around? T, um... Uh, Rick Boyer, uh, you name it. We had a lot of people that were kind of, you know, they had their own personalities, and that's how God uses them. Well, when I was in this ministry, I uh, pastor came up to me and said something about, you know, I asked him, I said, well, do you ever listen, you know, to Chuck Smith tapes, or do you watch his videos? He said, no. And I looked him right in the eye and said, well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm not sure he ever really knew what I meant. <laughs> I mean, at the time, I'm sure his intention was to say that he was very being led by the Spirit and inspired, you know, to teach the way he does. And, you know, such as it was, I, I reflect on some of the oddball teachings he had, and I kind of wish he would have, you know, maybe listened to more of Chuck. But... At any rate, he was, and still is, you know, a minister of God, and God uses him. And, you know, I'm not going to say much more, or I'll reveal who it is. But it brought to mind something that just happened the other day, that I was watching a uh, Francis Chan um, pastor video, and uh, we're getting ready to do a series of video presentations based upon um, watching his videos, my wife and I, and we're going to discuss it. But... Anyways, I was watching one of his videos and he was talking to young pastors and how he was making a point about how young pastors need to, well, first of all, he made the point about how wonderful it was about Ian Bonner in these last days, in, the, in this generation we live in, that we have such a wealth of dynamic preachers, you know, people that are really good teachers. I mean, they're out there declaring, I'd call them preachers rather than teachers, but they're declaring the Word of God, very, very good sermons. They know how to put together a sermon, they got it organized, they got it coordinated, it's an exhaustive or expositional, it gives, you know, the foundation of the scripture, you know, and the application of it in um, context and history and the set, setting and the circumstances, and it makes it all work together into a nice little package and tie it up and wrote, put a bow on it and send it home with people. And <laughs> He also cautioned the young pastors to not be so professional in what they're doing 
that they're not applying it to themselves. In other words, you can't teach what you don't know, even though you might be able to put it together in a neat little package. You probably should be teaching what you're doing and applying in your life as it works in your life. Because if you're trying to make it into a format of religious practices and you haven't been there yet, it really is hypocrisy. <laughs> so what the Lord laid on my heart today was to remind people to learn from your leaders. I mean, whoever it is that's gone before you, learn from. Whether it be a Catholic, a Protestant, a Methodist, a Baptist, an atheist, or atheist whether, wherever it be that God is leading you, he may want you to learn something there. You know, and that might be an atheist or a person from another place and time or religion even. Because you might learn something that might give you an insight into the scriptures. I mean, don't, don't ever treat them all as truth, but learn from them. I mean, I was just thinking about, you know, I got like Tozer here, I got Rick's books, you know, I got Chuck, of course, you know, and I got some guys, you know, from Ridenauer, you know, from way back, you know, K, and I mean, don't limit yourself in any way, shape, or form from learning from leaders. There are leaders in the ministry today that I am blessed by the internet to be able to get their material free. So are you. You're getting something from me, even, you know, that I'm not saying I'm teaching you, but hey, you know, I'm reminding you of those things that you're learning in your own personal Bible study time. But you need to be aware that if you stick with only some narrow minded perspective, you're going to stay narrow minded. You're going to become a cookie cutter. Now, I was blessed when I was at Calvary, Costa Mesa, because hmm, at the time, they all went out to wide variety of Calvaries and do even different ministries like Missler or, or we would have different people come in like on Wednesday night, uh, School of the Bible, you know, or um, I remember when a woman came in and taught at Calvary. A woman teaching at Calvary? Chuck doesn't do that. <laughs> well, Chuck shocked everybody. She taught on Matthew, you know, a Jewish woman came in and taught the Jewish perspective of Matthew, which me personally, I was blessed out of my mind. I'm sure that there were people sitting around that were shocked out of their shorts. <laughs> but the point is, you learn. It doesn't matter who God uses. Learn from it. Don't take everything they say necessarily, but prove all things. But then once you do prove it, then enjoy what you've learned. It's not about the person that's presenting it to you. It's about what you're learning from it. The point is, is that it's the message, not the messenger. It is what's out there that you're applying to your life and considering in your mind and trying to make work with your spirit as the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Now, the Holy Spirit can use anything. He can use the radio, KYMS, you know, K-Love, K-Wave, you know, any number of radio stations the Holy Spirit can use. It's not about who sponsors it or who owns it, you know, and so we were to protest something by way of shutting down the message because we didn't like who sponsored it. Or even the Holy Spirit using, dare I say, TBN. <laughs> or or other people like Osteen or, you know, even him of all things. You know, I mean, God can use anything that he chooses to use because it's not the person he's using that we look at. It's the message that's being brought that we hearken to. And if the message is right, then the Holy Spirit can make what part of it is right applicable to us. So remember, the Holy Spirit is your teacher, not not the person, not not whoever's out there, you know, in front of you. But in learning from your leaders, because it's the Holy Spirit that's out there teaching, you have to have the Holy Spirit in you in order to discern it. So you need to really start to not, you know, worship the Holy Spirit. That's stupid because the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself. He speaks of Jesus. But you need to ask God to reveal to you the truth because then he'll cause the Holy Spirit in you to reveal the truth. So you always pray to God our Father. You always pray, you know, and ask through Jesus' name, you know, to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, to cause you to hear what's important to you, to learn how to discern what is good and applicable in your life. 
Because there's lots of leaders that, you know, I mean, some of them I, I don't particularly, you know, have a real hankering to learn from. But I have sat down in different churches at wide varieties of times in my Christian walk and been blessed out of my mind. Well, maybe in my mind, but blessed out of my shorts. You know, well, maybe in my shorts. Blessed out of my socks. Yeah, that fits. That, uh, <laughs> you didn't see that one coming now, did you? <laughs> blessed out of my socks. I had my socks blessed on. That, um, God used them in that day, in that way, for me to hear what he would have to say. And that's why you should learn from your leaders. Now, it doesn't mean they have to lead you and you have to follow them for the rest of your life because you should have a variety and, you know, it should be a part of your experience to learn from them as best you can. I'm not saying, you know, that any pastor that's in a church should not be intimidated by the fact that you are learning from a variety of sources. But rather, they should be encouraging you by providing you with the tools to go and search out on your own and to study and apply it. Now, you shouldn't be leading things, you know, without consulting your, you know, if you have and you are a part of a ministry, then, of course, there's an order and a way that you do things that God provides you for in order for your benefit that would keep you safe from heresy or from error or from, you know, stumbling or from bumbling along and causing others to fail or fall. But as you learn, that God will be able to speak to you more about that and discern for you what you should do in any given situation as you experience the wealth of what leaders from our past have provided for us with the rich heritage, what leaders of our present day are giving to us by way of reminding us of the scriptures, and what leaders may be in the future that you become by way of having a broad base foundation so that when your roots extend outward, you can stand the storms of life that come that blow and rock the tree to and fro. But that because you've got a wide base, you're not likely to be knocked over by false doctrine or false theology or even false ideas or prophecies or things that are kind of like ooh, weird. So expand your base, you know, get your foundation assured on Jesus Christ and grace, but then begin to expand it and understand and learn as God leads you to learn and to discern what it is he would have for you. Because it's too easy to be narrow-minded when you think you're following the narrow way. That's not what God meant. He's given us many, many, many teachers that are just blessed in the word. I mean, they they have a good comprehension of it and a good knowledge that we can partake of and see that the Lord is good. And as we do that, then we need to also do the second part that that I was listening to the video say, you know, that, that Francis was mentioning. And that was, don't just be a hearer of it. You know, you, you got to take what it is that you just heard for the week and make it practical in some way that day. Make it an action and an attitude of your heart to do something about it. In other words, if you if you felt convicted, like say he was talking about pride, and the first action ought to be God. Always. That ought to be the first words out of your mouth. Not, I didn't do it, or what's that mean? But God. Show me the reality of pride in me and take it far from me that I may not be found prideful. And God, as you do, show me the next step that I can do to remove this from all areas of my life. And then go forward with that in some action. Either, you know, write it down, you know, that this this date was what I was working on or or even take a step of faith by reaching out to someone else and say, you know, I wanted to talk to you, you know, wife, <laughs> husband, that um, I, the Lord's been really kind of talking to me this week in the service about pride, you know, and I kind of wanted you to let me know about pride. And then an hour later, you'll say, uh, that's enough. You don't have to tell me any more about pride. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Get together in some practical way with someone you trust <laughs> and be accountable for what you're learning. 
So that way, if you're accountable for what you're learning, you're going to put into practice what you're learning. And that removes the idea of just constantly getting bombarded with good teaching after good teaching after good teaching after good teaching, and you just go, man, Sunday was so powerful, it was a great message. And then the next Sunday you go, man, it was a great message. And the next Sunday you go, man, it was a great message. And then somebody comes up and says, well, what'd you do about it? You know, well, nothing. <laughs> you know, I ask my wife all the time, you know, well, you know, what did you get out of the message? You know, she used to go, I don't know. <laughs> After bugging her enough times, she's responding, what you got out of the message? Pretty soon, in a couple years, <laughs> if I have to, enough stupidity to ask her, I'll say, so what are you doing about the message? <laughs> or maybe we'll make that part of our wives' tales, you know, video series that we're doing. But you know what I'm saying. How are you going to respond to the message? Then how are you going to put the message into practice? That's really what makes for whether or not you're actually learning something or just listening to something. You need to learn from your leaders and not just listen only. And then most of all, not to ignore when the Spirit of God is telling you to do something. Because you can either listen, you can learn, or you can ignore. And each one of those are gonna have consequences in your life. But as you follow the Lord and learn from your leaders, you'll find you become a leader yourself. Thank <laughs> you.